This video is about writing and reading CSV files. There are a number of operators that you can use to write and read CSV files. Files can be written to the file system or, in fact, to the RapidMiner repository. Because reading and writing data is fundamental and CSV files are very common, this video will be very relevant because you will find you'll have to do this. We'll cover writing a file to the file system, reading and parsing a CSV file directly from the file system. This will include using the wizard and looking at the parameters. Then we'll parse a CSV file from one which was previously opened. We'll then write a CSV file to the repository. Then we'll parse a CSV file from a previously opened file that was itself stored in the repository. And finally we'll show an example of parsing a CSV file from the context which might be very important when using Rapid Analytics. So let's look at a process. I have created a process and a view to make things show up in one place. So the process is as shown here. If I click this button here we can see the operator execution order. What I'll do is I'll go th through each of these one by one explaining the salient points so let's start with let's start with these two operators here so this one just simply makes some data doesn't matter about the details here's the first write CSV so if we select that operator we can see the parameters so I'm providing the location of a file um, or Windows, so it's ctemp-file.csv and I can specify certain things about the CSV file, so column separator, that's simply the separator that delimits each value. Write attribute names, that means put the names of the attributes at the top of the file. Quote nominal values, that means put double quotes around values that are not numbers or, or that are intended to be interpreted as nominal values. Format date attributes, that is either, depending on whether I select it or not, the number of milliseconds in since the Unix epoch or a date and a time in a human readable format. If I select if I select that to be true, then you, you've got a human readable format. Append to file, that could be used, I guess, to write to the same file without overwriting it. Encoding a system, I just leave that as the default. So if we run that, I'll, I'll set a breakpoint on this operator, run it. Now what we're seeing is the data, so it's actually the iris data set with a date attribute added to it, which is the date when I'm running this process, just after midnight. Now if we go to this file here, Here's one I prepared earlier. I'll just use a notepad to look at the file. So I'll shrink that down so we can see it in one page. Okay, so here's um, a copy essentially of this example set. This is this is the example set that I'm writing to a file, and you can see the first row is the names of the attributes with the names in double quotes because these are nominal values separated by semicolon which is the column separator then each row is data and you can see there are numbers here 5.1 which is that one there 3.5 which is there 1.4 0 0.2 and you can see id underscore one and iris satosa are both nominal so they've been put in quotes and the date is formatted in a human readable format in a US sort of style. And you can see you can go on like that. So that's very straightforward. The next operator is read CSV. This one's more complicated. So if I set a breakpoint on that, let's run it. Now what this does is read a file that's previously been created. So if we look over at the parameters to that, I'm going to move this context out of the way temporarily. You can see it takes the location of a file, it wants to know the column separators, i.e. the delimiter between the attribute values, 
trim lines. If you set that to true, it strips off white space at the beginning and end of the, each line. Use quotes. That's basically saying use double quotes around nominals. So I could turn that off and on. I'm leaving it on. And I can even override this double quotes character. The escape character that's used to embed within strings something that would normally be interpreted as something else. So double quotes, in other words, you could escape double quotes or the actual delimiters themselves by using this character here. Skip comments, you can set that to true and then obviously any line that's preceded with this configurable value, config, configurable character rather, um, will be ignored. Parsing numbers, this attempts to see a number and parse it with a decimal point which you can specify here. If You can also group digits by having commas. Date format, if it encounters a date it tries to turn it into a date attribute of type date. So this is these are the, are the instructions to it to allow it to know how to do that. First row's names, that's simply saying if the first row has names in it they should be used as the attribute names in the example set. Annotations, more advanced you can specify where your data has come from. I tend not to use it that much. Time zone, local, encoding, etc. I tend not to change these from the defaults. You can also say if you don't find a value you can make it missing. Usually it's worth doing that. The key to the CSV file reading is actually the parameter settings here. If I click this box here, edit list, this is um, a set of instructions that say how to map columns that you find in the input data to attribute names and types, also with a role here. Uh, you can painstakingly fill that in one by one by doing add entry and so on and selecting from these drop downs what you want. So for example if A1 that I find is uh, a number then I probably want it to be a real but I could override that and have it numeric or nominal or whatever and I can, this is the role type attribute so it's just a regular attribute. Um, we all happen to know that the ID column is of type ID. It happens to be polynomial, pol pos polynomial, I beg your pardon. And so on. Anyway, you can fill this in manually, but there's an easier way, and it's to use the wizard, which we'll look at now. You simply click the Import Configuration Wizard button. And this is the first screen, so I'm, it already knows where the file is, so it's in C temp file CSV, so I click next. So this is the first view through this. Basically you can now choose whether to trim lines and skip comments and so on, and essentially matching the parameters in the outer level. The important things are the column separators, so semicolon. Let's see what happens if I change that to comma, for example. You can see that it gets, all, it, it gets confused and it thinks the data has errors in because it can't find a comma. Similarly space it, it, that's not really correct for the data, so it's sort of finding columns where there shouldn't be any. Um, semicolon is the one to use, tab. No, that's not right. If You can use a regular expression here, so if you know what they're doing, you can actually put type in a regular expression to dictate what the delimiters are. But for now, we'll leave it at semicolon. Escape character, use quotes, you can see those are filled in as before. And now you, you can see it's had a go at importing the data. So the next thing is if I click next, this now lets you put annotations on the data. So essentially this annotation says this is the name row, all the rest is just blank. And you can see it's having a pretty good go at importing this data and parsing it. If I do next now, this is essentially where you make the mapping that's the important part. And essentially this is the same view as in the metadata of the information from this part here, but rotated on its side. So you can see A1, you can actually override that if you don't like A1, A2, A3, A4. So those are names that came in from the CSV file. It's detected that they're reals, so it's it's guessed as real. If you don't like that, you can change it. It's It always assumes that all attributes are just regular, so it defaults it to attribute here. However, we can override that. I'll do that for this one, and I'll do it for this one. And you'll notice that I've also specified a date format, and that happens to be correspond to the date format that is actually in the raw data. If I go previous, yeah, you know, there you can see that it's, it's month, day, year, hour, minute. And there's no second, 
as you can see. So, all in all, it's done a pretty good guess. There are a, subtle, a couple of subtle points. Um, the preview. Now, I've overridden the default for the number of rows to use, and I've set it to 100, as an arbitrary number, 111, because the RS dataset has 150 rows in it, 150 examples. The first 50 are Iris Satosa. The next 50 are Iris Fasicola. And the final 50 are Iris Virginica. Now, if I had set, or if I'd taken the default of using only the first 100, that would have had the effect of not detecting or not seeing anything after this row here. So this would have meant that the guess that Rapid Miner would make, it would have deduced binomial. It would do, tend to do that, which is wrong. So when, when you import the data, really, you will get an error when it encounters a third value for something it's expecting to have only two values. So that's just a little word of warning. Um, so I tend to, you just have to take a bit of care. The way to spot it is to look for things that are binomial, and if in fact you know they're not, just set it to polynomial. Okay, if I click finish now, now if I run this process, I'm simply going to run it, and what we should see is the data read in with ID label and the attributes. Okay, the next one we'll look at is here. This is where we're going to read a CSV file, but we're not going to take it directly from the file system in the parameters to the read CSV file itself. We're actually going to take it from an input to the read CSV file operator, and that input has been created by another operator called open file so if I click on open file you will see you can choose the resource you want to open file and I'm choosing it is file temp file.csv if I set a breakpoint there and run that you'll see that the object is of type file and there's not much information on it but it's a file and here it is okay the key thing is though that that gets passed to the read CSV operator and it's parsed in the normal way so to prove that let's just run through the whole thing I'll set a breakpoint after the read CSV operator and you can see that it's imported the data correctly I haven't in this situation if I go back to the read CSV operator if I select the metadata information I haven't I haven't defined anything, so essentially it's just picking defaults. So of course I haven't said the ID and label attributes should be special, so they're just being set to regular. Um, but that's not the point. The point of this particular thing is to show that you can pass files round as objects, and they can be passed as inputs to operators. Quite powerful. So the next next part we'll look at is these three operators here numbers 6, 7 and 8 in the execution order the first of these reads a CSV file in the normal way no need to look at that again the second one, write CSV file yeah, essentially it's the same as this one up here with one difference which is this connection here which is different to the connection I'm using here. So if I delete that connection, you'll see what happens. The parameters are here. So when I'm not using this file connection, I have to provide a file name. If I connect the connection up, you'll notice the file name disappears. So essentially what I'm doing is creating an object. So it's the same output from this same type of object as is output from the open file operator here and then what I'm doing I'm going to write that to the repository so for that I use the write file operator here are the parameters so you can choose instead of writing 
a file to the file system, you can write it to the repository. And there seem to be a number of different possibilities for the type. For the MIME type, I choose this one normally. CSV example, that's somewhere in my repository. So if I run that, I'll set a breakpoint at the point there. And the actual type of the object is a file. It's actually in memory. This shows that you can pass objects around which correspond to files. Very powerful. Next we'll look at actually opening a repository entry and using the read CSV file operator to parse that. So that's different from the previous case where we open the file directly from the file system. So the way you do it, you use the open file operator but you just point it to the repository. So as you can see, I simply choose repository blob entry, CSV file, CSV example as the name in the repository. And I then pass it to the read CSV file operator. And I've given it a name read CSV from repository. So that will just work in the same way. So I'll set a breakpoint on there run it. Now what we'll see is sure enough an example set. Now you'll notice I haven't given any special roles to these attributes and basically I haven't actually used the wizard or overrode any of the metadata information here. If I click this here you see there's nothing. I'm essentially using the defaults that it uses, it manfully struggles and does a good job in fact of reading a default CSV file. If I had had the time I could have fiddled around with the configuration wizard and so on. But that isn't really the point of this particular thing. The point of this is that you're reading a file from the repository rather than the file system and then parsing it using the read CSV operator. Final one then is, this is again a read CSV operator but instead of taking file input from either the repository or a file system object I'm actually going to take it from this thing here. This is an input from the I suppose the outer level of the process. Now this is actually set in the context and you do it like this you basically set up wh where you'd like the input to come from and and essentially it's just the repository. So this is exactly the same in fact as this here with the difference that the object that the CSV file operator parses is delivered from the context. That's useful in two ways. Firstly if you want to run this process as part of a rapid analytics process uh, you can also use it with the execute process operator and you can pass parameters to it and those parameters turn up or can be made to turn up here. So finally I'll just run the whole process with no breakpoints and quickly cycle through all the outputs so you can orientate yourself. So there are six outputs starting at the top. This is the write CSV output here. This next one in is the read CSV. This one is the attributes read in from a file. Write CSV as object is this one. Read CSV from repository is this one. And the last one, read CSV from context.